Hey there. So I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Uh, and every time I've started, I've gotten interrupted. Something's happened. Plus I've had a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, what with suddenly, you know, studying to be a rabbi. <laughs> um, that happened uh, all of a sudden. And uh, just finished up my six week, sixth week at uh, Academy for Jewish Religion, um, and which has been awesome and great, by the way. But it was, it's was it been a wild ride since I only knew I was going to be starting the term uh, less than two weeks before the term started. So it's been busy and crazy. And at this point, I know that if I don't just make this video straight through without needing to edit it, it's just not going to get it done and I'm not going to upload it. So hopefully we'll be able to get the time. Uh, I've been thinking a lot over the last couple of months about how Judaism doesn't feel relevant to a lot of Jews. Even some people who grew up going to Hebrew school, uh, Hebrew day school, or, or on the weekends, uh, even for some people who went to synagogue every week with their parents, they grew up, they, they had their bar or bat mitzvah, and maybe that was the end of it for them. For some, you know, as soon as they grew up and were out of the house, they were like, bah, done. And it just didn't have relevance to them. And um, among other things, I read a book called American Jubu. And one of the points that is made in that book is that a lot of Jews look for relevance in Buddhism because they didn't see it in Judaism. And for a certain percentage of those people who first discover like spiritual connection or something relevant to them in Buddhism, after they've studied Buddhism, they come back and they look at Judaism and they realize that many of the things that they were seeking were here all along. They just hadn't recognized them before. And so I want to talk about some of those things that make uh, Jewish practice relevant to me personally. I can't guess what's going to make it relevant to you or if anything could make it relevant to you, but perhaps by sharing what's relevant to me, it can open some doors. So if you went to synagogue as a kid or Hebrew school or whatever, you may be familiar uh, with this song that we sing during the Torah service on Shabbat as we're bringing the Torah out, uh, we sing Al Shlosha Devarim, Ha'olam Omed, Al HaTorah, Ve'al Ha'avoda, Ve'al Gemilut Chasadim. On three things, the world stands on Torah, on worship, and on good deeds or deeds of compassion, deeds of loving kindness. So Torah is is religious study, whether that's the five books of Moses or the whole Tanakh or Talmud or Kabbalah or discussing prayers. Right now you're watching this video, you're engaged in studying Torah and I'm engaged in studying Torah as I discuss this. Torah is, is just all of the whole realm of learning, right? Uh, especially learning that's relevant to your your Jewish practice. So for some people, studying science could be Torah, because if they're integrating that as part of their cosmology within the context of their Judaism, then absolutely that's Torah too, right? Gamze Torah. Also, this is Torah. So that's one area, and I will definitely do some videos later about uh, study and making that relevant because obviously I love that because I study at Svara and at AJR now. <laughs> I'm currently taking uh, four classes at AJR and two at Svara. So yeah, it's, it's a lot. What am I doing? Anyway, but I love it. I, I really love it. <laughs> so the last one is Gimilut Chasadim. And I don't think it takes a whole lot of explanation to say that 
good deeds are important in Jewish tradition. I'm going to leave that one to the side right now as well. Certainly, there will be other videos where I talk about that and how it could be relevant in your life. But today, I want to talk about the idea of Avodah. So the translation worship, just on its face value to me as as an modern American, like the idea of worship has a little bit of an ick factor, like, like who needs, what kind of a person actually needs worship? What kind of a God needs worship? But in, in my practice, I don't see it as God needing worship. I see it as a practice that is for me as well as for my community. But right now I'm going to focus on the personal, the internal, rather than the communal. Another time we can talk about the communal. But for the for the personal side of it, uh, Judaism has a lot of different opportunities to engage in a prayer practice. And a lot of that prayer practice is set in the form of, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who blah, 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 blah. blah right? And if you think about that and, and think about it sort of in context, you might realize that actually that's a gratitude practice. There's a teaching that you should say a hundred brachot every day, a hundred blessings every day. And so that starts at the beginning of the day with saying the blessings for everyday miracles. Uh, you know, the, the first one off the bat, well, not the first one off the bat, but, but the first one in the list that's called the blessings of everyday miracles is bless are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gave the rooster, the wisdom to be able to tell the difference between day and night. And this one cracks me up personally, because I've lived in places where there are roosters that, you know crow in the morning and let me tell you they don't care whether it's day or night at three o'clock in the morning when it is still definitely dark outside they are crowing up a storm whatever i don't know what they were thinking when they made that prayer uh sometimes sehvi <laughs> is translated not as crow or not as rooster but as mind and that one makes maybe a little bit more sense Thank you, God, for creating my mind that's able to tell the difference between day and night. It's a really simple thing. To think of it as a miracle, I don't know. But it's something that I can have gratitude for. And another one is, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the Universe, who gives strength to the weary. I like to call that one the blessing over coffee. I don't usually say it you know, when I'm drinking coffee, because the actual blessing for coffee is, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who made everything by your word. But, you know, it still, it, it strikes my funny bone. There are so many different blessings, so many different opportunities for us to engage in this everyday gratitude practice. And just that, even if you're not saying the Shema, even if you're not saying the Amidah, if all you're doing is saying these one-line blessings throughout the day, you've got this touch point throughout the day where you're recognizing the beauty of the world. You're recognizing the flavors of the food. You're recognizing smells. We have different blessings for nice smells that come from herbs, nice smells that come from trees and nice smells that come from eh, I don't know where it is coming from but it's a nice smell <laughs> and the fact that we have three different they're almost the same but slightly different blessings for nice smells gives us the opportunity to say blessings and be mindful of what it is that we're grateful for. So it's also a mindfulness practice. So here's this beautiful flower. It smells so good. Which blessing am I going to say? Well, is it on a tree? 
Is it on a shrub? Is it is it on an herb? Yeah, and then I get to pick which blessing I say, and I'm engaging in gratitude, and I'm also being very aware of that experience in the moment. We have a blessing for when you see a rainbow. We have a blessing for when you see a mountain. We have a blessing for when you see, well, when you see the Mediterranean Sea particularly, but they call it the big sea. So being a West Coast, US-based Jew, uh, to me, the big sea is the Pacific. And I know full well that they meant the Mediterranean, but in my current practice, that is not actually relevant. But the Pacific Ocean, when I get to go see the Pacific Ocean, th that is relevant to me. And so I absolutely will say the blessing for seeing the big sea when I see the Pacific Ocean. These blessings are an opportunity for us to just take a moment over and over and over throughout our day to just be aware of where we are, of what we're experiencing, be aware of the fact that it's something for us to be thankful for. And you don't actually have to believe in God. You don't have to believe in a personal God to be saying these blessings. One of the cool things to me about the name of God that we always translate as Lord or Hashem, the name, the actual name as written, that yud he vav he, that's like the word to be in the past tense, present tense, and future tense all squished together. And so this, this weird, not even a conjugation of the word to be as a name for God suggests that God is all of existence, all of being. And there are many mystical teachings about just that. So without contemplating a personal God, with just accepting that what you're saying is, thank you universe for creating this opportunity for me. Does the universe have consciousness or not? It doesn't matter whether you believe the universe has consciousness or not. It's still happening all around you. And you can take that moment to be grateful for it in whatever form. Now, for me personally, I do think that this God that is everything that is and some ineffable thing beyond that does have consciousness. I'm agnostic about whether that God could even possibly have a direct relationship with us. I think that when we have a relationship with God, we're only having a relationship with a facet of God, not the whole big God. Because that whole big everythingness that is, was, will be, that's, it's not just ineffable, it's completely out of our reach. But somehow we do have spiritual experiences. Many, many, many people in many, many cultures have experiences that they would call experiences with the divine. So what is that? To my understanding, that's a connection with some aspect of that larger divinity. And sometimes even a human can step in and do something that is like divine providence. My mom calls that an ad hoc angel. When some person comes along at just the right moment and does something, saves your life, saves your day, fixes the situation, you know, she says, yeah, God sent an angel to do this miracle for you. It's just that that angel was a person. In that moment, they were an ad hoc angel. And I love that mental image of the way in which God works through all of the pieces. Because if God is made up of all of the pieces, then God can move the pieces about or use what's handy close by in order to make stuff happen. And then we can turn around and we can be grateful for it. And even if you don't think that there's a consciousness that is literally moving things about, 
in that way, you can still be grateful for <laughs> the, the miracle of synchronicity. Because once you start looking for synchronicities, once you start thinking about synchronicities, they're everywhere. And the more you're open to noticing synchronicities, the more you experience them. And the more you dig into that experience of gratefulness, of being able to bless something outside of yourself for these experiences that you have, the more you feel grateful inside. It, it might start out as just words, but as long as you actually think about the words when you're saying them, don't just like blah, 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 and by rote, but actually think about them as you're saying them, think about what you're saying as you're saying it, then it has an effect on you. It works on you and it begins to change something inside of you. And there's lots of research about how having a gratitude journal can help people sometimes through depression, sometimes through other difficult times to, you know, change the way that they experience life and move through it. And I think that that's just one hint as to how a prayer practice that starts out by engaging in being grateful and blessing something outside yourself for all of these experiences can change us. So I challenge you to try this out just even for a few days, maybe take a week and say, I'm going to say blessings for as many things as possible. If you're Jewish and you have a Siddur to hand, look up the blessings for things. You don't have to memorize the Hebrew, especially if you don't understand Hebrew. Start off with the English, right? And if the the wording, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, doesn't connect with you, just say your own words. Thank you, God, for this rainbow. Thank you, God, for this amazing mountain. Thank you universe for bringing this person into my life thank you universe for this opportunity to meet a great teacher or thank you universe for this opportunity to smell this beautiful flower or these spices or this food thank you universe for allowing me to eat this food that comes from plants and animals and whatever else your food comes from. <laughs> it's all coming from, from the earth, right? And it's all coming from stuff that already exists. None of that is just coming out of nothingness. Everything is made out of something else. And to take just a moment to think about what is underneath how things are made, that they exist. Um, and perhaps you can add on to that gratefulness to the people who are making things. That isn't part of the set prayers within the Siddur, but that doesn't mean that you can't include those as well in your own practice. Part of engaging in Jewish life is reaching back into the history, our ancestors, our, our, our literal parents and grandparents and great, great grandparents, but also our ancestors of teaching, the ones who taught us. If you happen to be a convert and you're like, I didn't grow up Jewish, who are my ancestors? that I can speak of in this context. Well, your teachers are your ancestors and, and the teachers that you read. So if you've read some Talmud, those are also your teachers. And the teacher who taught you some Talmud, that's your teacher. The Torah is your teacher. The people whose hands wrote the Torah, they're your teachers. The rabbi or lay leader who 
has sat down with you and taught you things. They're your teachers. And so all of them, they're all your family. They're all your ancestors as well. And so this tradition that you've gotten from all of these teachers, all of these biological ancestors, whoever they may be, that is one piece of the Judaism as it exists right now. The other piece is how you personally are taking all of those lessons and making them relevant in your present moment. The way that you take that and you engage with it, you are, as you practice, evolving it inside of yourself. Now, will it evolve? Possibly, if you then share how you've engaged with things with other people, then you may be bringing forward new innovations in Jewish practice. That's not wrong. That's absolutely right. That's how all of our traditions have been made. And then someday you get to be somebody else's ancestor. But where do you start? Start with something simple. Start with a gratitude pro a practice. Start with a practice of trying to say 100 brachot. I'm going to put a link in the description of this um, video uh, to a place where you can look up lots of brachot. Um, this particular one, the one I'm thinking of right now, is an, an Orthodox source. I'll try to find some other sources that are not Orthodox uh, so that you can engage with some other blessing practices. Um, look at the different kinds of blessings. There are blessings for things that you do, mitzvot, commandments that you've taken on to yourself. Uh, like washing your hands. There's a blessing for washing your hands because we're commanded to wash our hands after we go to the bathroom and we're commanded to wash our hands before we eat food, right? So we've been commanded to do this. So therefore there's a blessing for it. There are blessings for studying Torah. So since there's a commandment for that, there's a blessing for that. Explore what are the blessings for the things you do that are relevant to you and find those things that you can just stick into your mind so that when you engage in a practice, when you do something that is somehow Jewishly relevant, when you experience a rainbow or food or whatever, you have that opportunity to engage with the universe, with God, with spirit and your Jewish tradition. So that's all for today. And I will talk to you soon. One last thing before I go. As I make this video, it is Thursday of, what is the date today? February 29th. Goodness gracious. Um, I have to pay uh, $1,300 for my... Uh, AJR tuition for this semester on March 3rd, which is this Sunday. I need to raise that money. Um, I'm raising money from my synagogue, but my synagogue is very, very, very tiny. Uh, we're a small rural community. There's a reason that this community hasn't had a rabbi since like 1942. Uh, they really have never been able to afford one. Um, and it's a big deal that they are helping me somewhat with my tuition. I'm unable this, this term to get financial aid because everything happened so fast. But when I saw what the classes were, I realized how important it was to take these particular classes this particular semester. I went over that in another video. So I'm asking you if you're seeing this video to please help out. There is another link that's going to be in the description that is for the PayPal for the scholarship fund at the synagogue. It is a uh, leadership education scholarship. 
Now, if you put money into that between uh, February 29th, 2024, and May 1st, 2024, the likelihood is that the money will probably be going in to help pay for my tuition at AJR for this semester. Um, but anything over my tuition, which the total of my tuition for this semester is $8,111. And so far I've paid 2000 of that. <coughs> so whatever's left over in that pot is going to go to give other people the opportunity to get Jewish leadership training, whether that's uh, security training for for doing security for synagogues, or whether that's uh, board leadership training for members of the board of directors of the synagogue, or whether that's programs like uh, a prayer leadership program. Um, there are many of them, Hadracha from the URJ, but there are other prayer leadership programs as well that members of our small community might take in the future so that this community can continue to be sustainable and have services and programs and engage this tiny little rural Eastern Washington community. So if you can, please donate at the link down below. Thank you so much. And I will see you again soon to talk more about prayers because I'm going to jump into the Shema and its blessings in my next video. Thanks.